The thoughts, views, and comments expressed by Rodney Monker, his guests, callers, and advisors on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of ILS, the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV Studios and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without the express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2017. All rights are reserved. The role of a woman in the society is to submit. Birth control are the pills of the devil. Education is so fundamental to the development of a people. I'm murderous. Simple as that. What am I voting for? Voting will change nothing. Tout moun haïtien komo ye. God save the queen. Broadcasting live from ILTV here in Nassau, Bahamas. Welcome to Freedom March. My name is Rodney Monker. I'm a justice of the peace here in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And of course, I'm a member of the Holy Roman Catholic Church. I welcome everybody who is now beginning to join me here on ILTV.com. It is our Facebook page, and I'm sharing it on my Facebook page, Rodney Monker. So please make sure you spread the word. I also welcome those people who are listening to me via cable channel 224 and BTC Flow 1. One, two. My special guest today is noted attorney at law, Mr. Vin Monroe QC. Mr. Monroe, welcome to Freedom March. Thank you, Senator. And to my producers, please cut on my clock. To my spiritual advisor, quickly come because I'm going to need you here as Wayne Monroe discuss with me some of the dirty, nasty tricks that are taking place here in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. My clocks are off for the third time. So, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to Freedom March. Today, I ask the question, who is the nastiest Negro minister in the new cabinet of Prime Minister, the Honorable Hubert Alexander Minnis. Who is that nasty minister? We will identify him, name him, and shame him if he has any shame. Also today, Education Minister Jeffrey Light has been lifted to the status of a King George III Negro. So he's made history. He's the third minister in the government to be named to King George III Negroes. The first minister is the minister responsible for nothing and the prime minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, the Right Honorable Hubert Alexander Minnis. And the second King George III Negro is Tourism Minister Denuncio de Aguila, and now Education Minister Jeffrey Lloyd, who has just discovered that our Negro students don't know English nor maths. And what I want to ask that Negro Minister, what you going to do about it? Because it's education, stupid, and it's about teaching the children how to speak English, stupid. Well, the education minister, stop pussyfooting and describing. It is time for prescription. And I tell you what the prescription is, get up off your backside and teach the children them how to speak properly, proper English, 
and proper how to do maths. Okay? Goodness me, what's wrong with these Negroes? Huh? What you can do about it? Goodness me. Freedom March with Rodney Monker will be right back after this. This is Freedom March with Rodney Monker. Welcome back to Freedom March, broadcasting live here in Nassau, Bahamas. Welcome to ILTV. My name is Rodney Monka. My special guest is noted attorney at law, Wayne R. Monroe QC. Mr. Monroe, once again, welcome to Freedom March. Good to be here, Senator. My spiritual advisor, please come to the show, okay? I just have to say to the spiritual advisor, once he hears that I have a guest, if I don't have him in the studio, he plays the hooky. Oh dear. And I need him here. Well, folks, before I engage noted attorney Wayne Monroe QC, I have to go through my usual ritual of cursing out the new government and looking at the hypocrisy and the conflicts and the dishonesty. I'm going to start off with our new Negro Minister of Education, Jeffrey Lloyd. And most of you should know by now that Jeff Lloyd and I belongs to the same Christian denomination. We are both Catholics. In fact, Jeff Lloyd is an ex-deacon of the Catholic Church. And so I'm going to look at him and watch to determine to what extent is he a Christian. Now, first of all, Jeff and Mr. D'Aguila are making some serious errors in the Honorable House of Assembly. One of the things that they have been doing is attacking private citizen and private institution. Jeff is politically dishonest. Now, he raised in the House of Assembly the fact that the PLP government had come to some economic arrangement with the Seven Days Adventist Church. And I'm talking specifically about where the old Bahamas Academy was situated on Wolf Road. And he ran on. Let me show you how he's dishonest. In June of 2012, our latest school and St. Bede's, both of which are schools belong to the Holy Roman Catholic Church. The PLP also entered into an arrangement with our church. I was not a member of the church yet, but I was attending the church and then some years later, I was confirmed as a member. You tell me, you mean to tell me that Jeff ridicules the seven days Adventists, but failed to be honest and say, well, not only did they do it with the seven days Adventists, but there was also an economic range arrangement in which the PLP government invested over $1 million in the renovation of our latest school located through DeVoe Street in that Negro underprivileged poverty community. You see how Jeff them is dishonest? He's dishonest. And I'm doing this because Jeff being a member of the Catholic Church, if you're going to refer to another Christian denomination, you should now examine and bring out the facts. Is he suggesting that whatever arrangement that the PLP government had with the Catholic Church was, was safe and sanctified? And whatever arrangement that they had with the Adventists is ungodly? I want to know. I want to know. I want him to stop it. If you're going to bring the information, bring it on everything. Because I accuse you of being a hypocrite. All right? You're a hypocrite. A hypocrite. And today, you have been elevated to a King George III Negro. So, 
There are three powerful ministers in the new government who I have assigned to the status of King George the Third Negroes. His act is blessed majesty, the late King George III, reign between 1760 and 1820. Three Negro, three powerful Negroes in the new government of the Bahamas who are now collectively members of King George III Negro. Remember, I've identified two sets of Negroes so far, King George III, and King George VI and His Blessed Majesty reigned between 1936 and I think 1952. I've not put any of the Negro, other Negroes in King George VI. I'm conducting an investigation to determine whether or not culture and youth minister Michael Pintard ought to be elevated either to King George VI, or whether or not I should put him in King George III. So I'm going to bring Mr. Monroe on. But I need to point out to you that perhaps the most nastiest <laughs> minister in the menace, in the menace government is the Aguila. The Aguila is a dangerous Negro, and I'll tell you why. He comes to Parliament purporting to bring information on who were renting and which board reduced the rent. Well, the Aguila, if you are a man and not a big fat pussy cat, I demand that you tell me the name of the tenant. Tell me what's the name of the tenant. Don't half step. I say step now. Step now. Because you're nothing but a big, fat, fat pussy cat. Man, these people got me angry. Ah, he's a big, fat pussy cat. What kind of man you are? Huh? What kind of man you are? You're just playing politics. Tell us who the tenants are. Tell us the identity of the board that you fired. And also, tell us if their actions were lawful. You're supposed to be the Minister of Tourism. Why you don't go and find tourists? Go find some tourists with your big fat pussy cat. I have to say to them, there's nothing but a bunch of pussy cat with big fat pussy foot. And I'm gonna say it, not only the argument, I'm not afraid of you, because you are pussy lanimous. That's what you are, pussy lanimous. That's what they are. I wouldn't That's disagree. what they are. They're nothing. He's nothing but a picky teeth, man, Toby. He's nothing but a frying pan. And I'm extremely angry over the pseudo Minister of Education. You thought I didn't know big word, eh? I know big word. I might know what it means, but I know how it looks. See, that's the importance. I may not know what a pseudo Minister of Education means, but when I see him, I can tell him and pseudo minister of education, mean Jeff Lloyd, a Negro man who tells me a common open secret that the children them can't speak English and the children them can't do maths, he tells us. Well, what you can do about it? What you can do about it, Jeff? All you're doing is like if you're a peacock. Which one is the man? The peacock or yeah, the peahen? The peacock. Well, you are king. As if you are both peacock and peahen. All right? I'm tired of y'all. Tired of y'all. They just get me angry. Running on. All right? And then, the Aguila. You say $1 million in consultant fees? Name the Negro who got it. And tell me why you think that the Negro man should not be paid a $1 million. Tell me, the Aguila. Because... It is better to pay him than to have him partially smuggle goods into the country by reducing the custom rate. And you can't talk because you have BB in your eyes. BB, a bunch of hypocrites. Diagonal, you ain't safe. 
Me and you belong to the same Christian denomination. But I've now heard that His Holiness has a tweeter. And I'm going to tweet him. And I'm going to complain to the Holy Father because it would appear that in the Bahamas, many of the holy men are too political. So I'm going straight to the Holy Father. I'm going to go to the Pope, Pope Francis, because we have these, these are two men who profess Christian Catholicism. Huh? All Jeff is doing is describing. I don't want no description. You think I know the nigger that I can't speak English, God? I'm one of them. Huh? Don't you say I say the woman them when I mean plural? And when I say the man them, them, Jeff, is the plural. All right? You think you're smarter than us, eh? I got you. Tout le monde est ici. Minister responsable pour éducation. Il pas bon? Parce que les papes les mourir. Il pas checker pour les papes Si ou pas que moi, allez dans le camp road. Parlez avec Jeff Vassigné. Vassigné, yo dit. Papa li, il senti avant. Yo, Jren Li. Il pas bon. Et moi, dit, le qui donne ma main. Ah, Monroe, I have to curse before I bring in reason. Say, you are reason. I got to curse them. You see my point? Mm -hmm. Because these men belong to King George III. And the King George III Negroes are an unusual type of Negroes. They have to be cursed. Just curse them out. Because they have not been emancipated from what Brother Bob Marley say is mental slavery. So I had to carry on. We have to focus. I call on the PLP. Y'all start organizing marching demonstration because I can't take it. I need marches and demonstration. We have to march on them. March! March! Because... These men, something is wrong. Something is wrong. Oh, well, I've had my rant. I now feel good. Okay. I think I'll have me a drink of water. Calm your, calm your posture. I've got to calm my posture. Yes. I mean, they have me angry. Can you imagine? You're not 60 yet, right? No, no, no. Something is wrong. I would want that by the time you read 60, you're not angry. At 60, I'm angry. Brother Monroe, don't mind. You soon come on. Where's this card? Folks, you would know that I'm wearing a wonderful polka dot bow tie. This is a bow tie, right? Yes. Okay, I need to ask my lawyer what this is because it's so wonderful. And this bow tie was produced by Victronia Lightburn. And she is the proprietor of Bahama bows. And I like this bow. They said this bow costs $30. So I'm going to ask my accountants if I can afford $30. You're going to have to find $30 because I like this bow. Well, if you could afford accountants, I hope you could afford $30. Well, well that is true. I, talk, I mean the man accountants. <laughs> right? So that's what it is. Monroe, we are both to soon <coughs> break. take a break, but... First of all, um, I know that you just come back from Nassau. I, you just came back from Grand Bahama. Grand Bahama. We, we'll talk about that on the other side yeah, of the break. Yeah, let me run for another. D during our conversation, yeah. though, you're going to have to spell coward for me. Oh, I can spell coward. <laughs> Listen, if I miss and don't spell coward correctly, remember what the Minister of Education say, that we don't know English well. Okay. But I think I could spell coward because all I have to do is to break the cow. See, coward is such a big word. It has cow in it. You see how yeah. big cow is? Oh, yeah. Cow. Coward. Capital C O W A R D. Jeffrey Light. <laughs> Didn't I spell it right? Coward. C O W A R D. Jeffrey Light. Well, not, not just him. Everyone in the House of Assembly who is um, making big accusations and then not stepping outside and repeating them. Because when you have courage, 
is if you believe what you say, you step outside Parliament and say it. Let me see if I can spell courage. Make sure I'm spelling, <laughs> spelling courage correctly. Other than that, this idle Minister of Education would embarrass me and say I can't speak English. Don't worry, I can't speak English. I know plenty words in Haitian Creole. And one of the words that I know in Haitian Creole is Monsieur Jeffleut, li pa bon. Li pa bon, li pa bon. But courage is C O U R A G E. Courage. Did I spell it correctly? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And I'll have you to know I have a, an attorney here. He's a QC. All he can do is spell big words. And he'll tell me when I spell it incorrectly. Oh boy, Jeff, them is something. Tenants owe airport $3 million. Jeff Lloyd said the children them can't read. They can't write. All right? And Jeff ain't no. Jeff, they sent me a document that you prepared. And the scholar said, see all this mistake Jeff got? They say he had the full stop the wrong place. You ain't going to do that to the minister. I have to do it to the minister because he's attacking us. So you, you're going to judge him as he judged the children? I'm going to judge him because all the professional, I asked them, I said, this comma is the right place? They said, no, the comma should have been around the corner. <laughs> and that thing that he did. But it's fun what is taking place. And they, they got me upset. Yeah, all right. Yeah. They have me ex upset. So I have to just curse them out. And guess what? When I come back from the break, we have to talk because I'm getting all kind of reports out of Freeport. I had a man from Grand Bahama, Peter Turnquist, a whole deputy prime minister and minister of finance has dug the man. But praise the Lord, I have his office number. So the people in Grand Bahama I'm going to give you his number and his fax. And I don't want you to give a fax. And just fax him up. Just fax him. Fax him. You hear me? He think only him could curse. But I say, Peter, fax you. Fax you. And we're going to fax you. All right? Because you're nothing but a faxer. All right? And we're going to fax you. Fax him. You hear me? We're going to fax him. They don't know that I could curse. You hear me? And I couldn't give a fox. <laughs> Whether or not the fox, I don't give a fox. Let's fox him up because he's a no good foxer. We're going to fox him. Peter, you can run, but you can't hide because I'm going to give Grand Bahama two fox number for you. And I call on the people to fox him up. Just fox him up. Fox, fox, fox him up. We're gonna fox you. Go on, you're nothing but a no good fox. Freedom March with Rodney Monker will be right back after this. The thoughts, views, and comments expressed by Rodney Monker, his guests, callers, and advisors on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of ILS, the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV Studios and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without the express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2017. All rights are reserved. Welcome back to Freedom March, broadcasting live on ILTV here in beautiful Nassau, Bahamas. My name is Rodney Monker, and my special guest today is noted attorney at law, Wayne Monroe QC. Mr. Monroe, I'm so honored that on short notice, I could get you to come. So I thank you, because I know you're very busy. Well, you, you know, Senator, if a senator calls me, I have to come. And once a senator, always a senator. Oh, praise the Lord. I, I hear people messing with you, and people still call HAI Prime Minister. But of course. And he ain't been Prime Minister for a little while. Papa will forever be Prime Minister, but because without him, 
Menace would have lost. <laughs> but there you go. Are you saying my point? Yeah. Papa made them. Yeah. So so anytime, but you know, I ask you to spell coward. Did and, I s- and you know your bow tie look could look a little bit like a cow spot, you know. That is true. So, um, so we well in theme here, because what I've been seeing on this budget debate is not many men of courage, but a lot of cowards. And why do I say that? Everyone knows that in Parliament, if you, you could run on with the most nonsense you want and tell outright lies. Yes. And let's be fair, these guys are admitted liars. They tell the people up and down for months, the PLP teeth to VAT money. That is true. After the people vote for them, they come out the next week, eh? The, but starting the, the following day. And say, you know, we always know nobody teeth to VAT money, but we can swing people with that, so we use that. Yep. And then the people say, well, we want to see the Obama deal. They say the government got to show you the Obama deal. Then they say, no, wait, we can't do that. And they always knew it. And so, then they came back, the Attorney General, and say, mind you, it's really seen by the court. Yeah. But that's not us. The bottom line to it is, you have these people who are, are admitted liars about the thief and the VAT money. Yes. Which is bad in this country because you're saying someone is a thief, and we know a liar is a thief, and a thief is a murderer. And so, you're making these serious allegations, and then you know them not to be true, and now you're making some more. And the thing about it, as they make these allegations, they run to the back and say, geek, 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 geek. They yeah. think it's a big joke. Yeah, well, unless they want us to regard them as a bunch of big pussy footers, yes. then they should step outside of Parliament and repeat the same thing. Yes. If what you say is true, you should have no problems repeating it outside of Parliament. And then can Dia and the Guardian and the rest of the people in the, par- in the Tribune if they bad, could report what this person says outside of Parliament. Because so that the Bahamian public will know, don't listen to what they say when they say in Parliament, but say it in Parliament, if they're not prepared to repeat it outside of Parliament. Yes. Because they know you can't sue them for this nonsense that they're saying in Parliament. So all of them are ballsless. I don't know what you call the women who... Don't have courage. I know you call men ballsless. Men are ballsless, and you can say that the woman is unsafe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the men the, are ballsless, and you can call the woman unsafe. And unless, and, and this is my challenge to them, I would challenge them to simply take their budget communication, hold the press conference, and publish it to the press outside of Parliament. And if they have faith in what they say, they will do that. Well, I want to take you to some of the remarks. There we have the Minister of Education, Jeff Lloyd, who appeared not to have done proper research. He comes out and he scandalizes the Seven Days Adventist Church. Well, and, and, and the government. But I know, prior to becoming a member of the Roman Catholic Church, that in June of 2012, um, there was an announcement that they were going to close down. And I know specifically that the then Minister of Education, Jerome Fitzgerald, was in a part of that negotiation in which the PLP government uh, renovated the school to a tune of a million dollars or more for, I think, special needed children. But Jeff Lloyd, who I'm accusing of being intellectually dishonest, failed to mention his church. Well, you know, the, the thing that was most disturbing about his contribution, he comes and he talks about these, um, this investment, this public private partnership, which is the way that the world is going everywhere. And he talks about, we've invested 25 million and then we have to pay rent of 60,000. And then when Glennis Hannah Martin stands up and says, table the document, he says, he doesn't have the document. Well, if you don't have the document, how, wh- how are you saying, where are you getting all these facts? Yes. So either you are being, you call it, um, intellectually dishonest, I just call it dishonest. Okay. 
or you're being dumb by repeating something that you haven't seen the documentation for. And I challenge him to repeat that outside of Parliament. Jeff, you are an attorney at law and an officer of the courts. You're being challenged by a senior officer of the court and attorney at law. If your foot is man foot and not pussy foot, step now. Step now and repeat it. And outside of parliament. Outside of parliament, yes. Because, you know, that they... they are carrying on, and I saw the same thing with Dr. Sand, sadly, and in the budget. With, where do with Dr. Sand, this is you talking about your, now. Your doctor. My doctor, what sin has he committed? Because I want him to be better than those other Negroes. What, is, what well, are you accusing well, him of? When he comes, he, he talks about things. Oh, they paid this for this, this for that, the next for the next. And this is all this kind of money. I bet you if you see one of his bills for heart surgery... It's a big, big bill. Not that it's not a proper bill, because if I want somebody messing with my heart, I'd be prepared to pay them lots of money or messing with my brain, lots of money, more than I would pay somebody to deal with my fingernail. Yes. And so that is intellectual dishonesty. When you take things out of context, you don't bring documents, you talk about their contracts without saying whether there were yes. any payments under the contract. And all you are doing is more of this day teeth the vat money story. And we've heard that before. And I think a lot of Bahamian people will be tired of that before. And so Dr. Dwayne San, if you at the, if you have balls, repeat your contribution well, outside the let, house. Let's help to remind. He's my doctor. Dr. Sans, you're my doctor. But we're in the opposition and we're gonna hold you and that ragtag government of Negroes accountable. Let's go back in history, doctor. Tell us about who the doctors, the members of the Doctors' Alliance, who Papa gave half of the Princess Margaret Hospital to Dr. Duane Sands. Bring that up and tell us how them doctors use our medicine, our theater for their private patients. And the Bahamas government ain't get their share of the money yet. And most of them are either FNM or FNM leaning. Let's talk about that. You see? Mm. See, I'm 60. Yeah. I yeah. know what Papa did. Because yeah. I told Papa he was wrong. Yeah. You should never give the people's hospital to the doctor's mafia. I mean, the doctor's alliance. <laughs> I said that to Papa. All right? I got to be careful because... You're in Parliament. Well, put it this way. No, I'm not talking about... Put, put it this way. I'm not talking about suits. No, but put it this I'm way, Senator. I'm talking about medicine. Yeah, put it this way, Senator. I would put greater store on what you say than what I heard over the last week or so. God save the Queen! Because all of those cowards knew that none of the private citizens they were slandering could sue them. Yeah. Why, whereas you know that you have to be careful. I have to be careful. You have to be circumspect. I have to be circumspect. Because people could sue you, but they run on with any kind of nonsense. Meanwhile, they're not performing. Here you have Jeff Lloyd, who's telling me the children them can't speak English. But has he told us how he can get them to speak good English? He can have an all-boys school. Yeah, but I don't want that because the last time he had a bunch of boys in the bush, <laughs> it was a yeast program. And Papa, I don't care what you all say about Hubert Ingram. He is perhaps one of the smartest Negro in this country. And when he heard Jeff was in the back of the bush with a program called yeast, I never know, man, grow yeast. Papa Claus is done. You heard me? Papa closed it down. And when they asked Papa why, Papa said, don't ask me nothing. And everybody recognized that if they were to put questions to Papa, Papa would put questions to their ma. Because Papa was opposed to all of them in the back of Andres on acres of land. Say yeast. Yeah, what kind but, of yeast? But you know, we have an all boys school, you know. We do? And an all girls school already. Really? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, you, Jeff didn't know that. You clearly didn't know it either. No. Tell me about it. There's a, I think they call it respect. Respect? You're there, talking about... No, not, not respect. respect. Sorry. There's a school on Gladstone Road. Gladstone Road. Sure. 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 Pro, yeah. Yeah? Sure Academy. It's an all-boys school. Yeah. yeah. And, and the Star Academy, which is supposed to go where the Bahamas Academy used to go. Right. Used to be. It's uh, supposed to be similar. Yes, I think it was on Dazzle Street. But I know it's out Gladstone Road. But but. Well, they had one on Dazzle Street because yeah. one day I was walking, and I saw a bunch of female in uniform. Yes. And it dawned on me that that, that like they were overweight, <laughs> right? Pace. And I draw near, and I said, "Listen, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. What's going on?" And the student said, Mr. Monker, and immediately I had to become sophisticated. She said, this is for students who are pregnant. Mm. Unbeknown to me, they were watching. And as I walk away, a light-skinned Negro woman called me back and said to me, now don't say anything. So I told her, no, I ain't going to say nothing right now. So you are correct. Yeah. They seem to have two schools for, same sex. for females. Yeah. One when you're done pregnant. And one before you get pregnant. <laughs> I don't know about an all-girls school before you get Listen pregnant. to me on Dazzle Street. Mm. You hear me? On okay. Dazzle Street. I can take it to you. It looked like a church is in the front of it. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you, 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 you I would... I think they call it Pacey. Yeah. 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 So, so, you know, all we have had, I would describe it as a bunch of cowards, one after another, getting up disparaging people and I'm sad the spiritual advisor isn't there because he could give us the scripture about yes. the tongue being deadly and the need to control your tongue yes but that's all they're doing and what I would say is I regard all the men as balls less and all the women as unsaved unsaved yeah. I can't say people unsaved I, but you have to I, can't, say I can't say that but, it's, um, but say you, that. you you always I'll say they are unrepentant then. Okay, unrepentant. Yeah. yeah. Unless they, within the next 7 to 14 days, come outside of Parliament and repeat what they said inside of Parliament. Because if they repeat something outside of Parliament, that is defamatory, then they can be held to account. This is supposed to be a government that's into accountability. Yes. If you want to be accountable over all this nonsense you've but talked over the last week or so, look what the repeat it outside of Parliament. Here is the Aguila, the Aguila, who has threatened the tenant. That's what he's done. You are a political coward. And I shall go into Haitian Creole so that you can't sue me. Not only are you a political coward, all right? Yeah, I think you're a pig. You're a pig. What kind of man you are? If, you, if the contract can't stand, you will make her pay. And you'll put her out. You think you own the airport, eh? You ain't own the airport. Don't you know what's the name of the airport? The Aguila? It's called Linden Pinling airport you should go and find some tourists they, he's not doing any work you know watch what is taking place did, didn't, didn't he make a commercial he, he on commercial too yeah it didn't. i don't somebody know somebody tell me he made a commercial i got no tv you know from they burned down my house you know but i had a tv well that's my fault because we got who, who are we supposed to sue now we're supposed to sue the, yeah. fat, the, the fat fellow who talk oh. that nonsense about yeah. you we ain't talking about Juan McCartney now. Juan McCartney is the second person you see. Yeah, the, the big fat Christian man. Yeah. Yeah. So those two. And, and, the, and then the government. And, and the government. And the government, them too. Yes. Okay, yeah. Because they obviously must have assigned him to the Guardian to curse me out. And when he cursed me out, I was a decent, honorable senator. And they've accused me of a crime. Yeah. Then you can sue them for me. I, 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 I will. I, I, you know, I, I need the Guardian money. We'll line that up, brother. All right. They, 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 they slandered me, accused me of criminal offenses. Can you imagine that? Yeah. These Negroes. All right. But the point that I make is the Aguila is very nasty. And you might not believe it. And the Haitian people, I've been talking with them. As we see the Aguila, um, he reminds us 
of when Papa Doc was in charge of Haiti because the Aguila comes from the upper class and he see the Negro Haitians as peasants okay I have to talk to a Haitian worker who works for him Zami moi ou mande moi pou vini na studio pas problème même est-ce que ou vini là pour parler bon pour monsieur Diagila ma fini ak nou ou comprend okay i just had to tell a haitian man who wants to come here that he can't come here to talk good about Diagila all right or oh, i finish with him don't forget it was Diagila and people like him who were upper class Haitian. They never liked us. Never liked us. Uh, so after beating on that chest, Brother Monica, let, let them just come out and say it. Yeah. They'll just come outside the thing. It's not like when a coward has a platform that he can stand up and say anything about you on and know that he can't be held to account. And he's mean. We have to move against him. I call on the PLP. When ministers of the government make irresponsible and rash statement how do you respond to it you do, you respond to it by carrying out peaceful political action you have to rally and sally that's the code word rally and sally and that is what is missing because we are the opposition and the opposition must keep the government accountable and we can do it in a very peaceful and forceful political manner. And the Aguilar is nasty. You hear me? He is nasty. And former Deacon Jeff Lloyd, he is nasty. Take it from me. I've told the Haitian people why Jeff is nasty. I'm reluctant to say it in English. But as I get angrier, I may repeat it one more time. Jeff ain't safe. Well, I, I use unrepentant, Mr. Well, you're the lawyer. Yeah. But where I come from... No, no, but that ain't legal. I just can't... I can't say if somebody's safe. Yes, I can't Mr. judge I can like tell. That. Okay. I know safe people when I see them. Okay. Jeff is not safe. You hear me? He's not safe. Don't forget, you know, before the election, he was sending threats to me. And he knows that I'm a brother in the same Christian denomination. I don't threaten no citizens, you know. You say the 30, how many members of parliament? 39. 39 members. They are the duly elected representative of the people. And I shall never threaten them or hit them. I had to convince Marvin Dame's daddy every morning he nagged me. I don't like Marvin. I said, man, stop saying that. So I had to come on the radio on the TV and say, Marvin, Marvin, I love you. Because it's far. Every morning. He accuses me. I don't like Marvin. I don't like Candia. I said, Candia? Listen, I love her. You know? But he, he torment me. Every day. I don't like Candia. I don't love I Marvin. Wonder, I wonder why he could think that. And I said to him, listen, I can't beat Marvin. Marvin younger than me. And he's a former police who can shoot gun. <laughs> you think I'm going to fight with him? So every day, he throw jazz at me. When he ain't throwing jazz, Henry Boswick. Can we sue Henry? All them clothes he give me. He keep throwing it in my face. No, can I, I, can I, I ask no, the court? No, but you can't sue him because that's true. So that's not defamation. It may be in poor taste, but it's not defamation. That ain't defamation? No. I didn't want people to know he give me all them clothes. No, but it's the truth. It is true. It's just in poor taste if he did it. What if I were to tear them up? You can't sue people for poor taste. What if I was to tear them up and ask the police for permission to pull up at his gate and fling them over the wall? Yeah. Would that be unlawful? Probably. Okay. Probably. Well, then I won't do it. If it's, if it's not unlawful, it would be in poor taste. For me to... Yeah. So keep the clothes? Yeah, give, give them to somebody. I like them clothes, man. What you should do is find a street person who passes his office or loiters around his office and give it to that person. And just pay them to stand up in the front of his office then? Yeah. It's a good idea. Yeah. Boy, but I like that coat. <laughs> Man, I like that coat? Well, keep it. And boss will keep throwing it in my face. 
I lent it to one guy. Boss Mick saw the man. And he stopped him. He said, this coat look like my coat. So the man say, Monk, this Monka coat. He said, yeah, that's my coat. That's the coat I give to Rodney Monka. You, 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 J. Henry did that to you? Yeah, man. All them good things he gave me. He just talking about it. But Boss Mick, I'm waking now. I'm going to buy you a suit. All right? But you ever thought about it if you didn't, think of, didn't talk about it? Fewer people would know about it. But my feelings is hurt. Okay. So I have to let the world know. Yeah, you hurt. I'm, that I'm hurt. You are hurt it. I'm hurt it. <laughs> Sound like Obia. <laughs> oh, but, but that's it, brother Mon. But my, my, my thing to them is we should disregard what this bunch of jokers have said unless they repeat. Not jokers, sorry. That's disrespectful to them. But this bunch of cowards have said yes. until they repeat it outside of parliament. Now, what about this victimization that is taking place? Because it appears that the uh, FNM has adopted an SRC. Yeah. I, I saw you and the spiritual advisor fetching for it. It's easy to remember the policy that the FNM operates. Okay. It's crazy. It's crazy. And crazy people are kept at the crazy Sandman's hit. Rehabilitation Center. So it S -R -C. is. SRC. Stop. Review. Review. And cancel. And cancel. And they should add something to it and then pay a lot of public funds to the contractors whose contract you just stop canceling review. Wow. And give me some money too on top of that as legal fees. Is it really true that the FNM is doing? Because you notice know, it's politics <coughs> and I don't want people to lie on the FNM. No, no, it happens. It's happening now. Is, and is there I, really evidence of it? Oh, yeah. I came from Grand Bahama looking at a seawall and taking some instructions. And what you will find, I put it down to something very simple, and I think you mentioned it. They promise people a lot of things. So if I got to give you a contract and somebody have a contract, I got to cancel that one. I got to pay him his loss of profit. Then you get to make your profit. And we pay for it out the people's money because wow. it's the people's time. It is the people's time. You see? So perhaps the FNM has a point then. Yeah. The PLP got the contract. Yeah. We'll take it from them. Pay them their profit. Pay, pay them their, their profit. Pay their legal fees. Right. Give it to the FNM person. Pay him money. Pay him his profit. So you pay two sets of profit. And you're saying they're it, doing it because what time is it? People's time, brother. Wow. And so they're spending the people's money because they're not spending their money. Wow. And they talk about responsibility. But could you imagine on a construction project you have to pay loss of profit twice? Wow. Like with the construction of the Paul L. Adley building uh, where the office of the attorney general is, which, yes. is, which is kind of ironic. And then you got to pay another contractor to mobilize and you got to pay him profit too and then you got to pay squirmy fellas like me lawyers money for nothing wow how could the fnm avoid it how could they is there not a strategy you, you could suggest to them how they could take away the contract no no i can tell them that i ain't gonna i ain't gonna help them you're not gonna it. help them i ain't have them do it you're right. gonna stand up to them no. and defend the poor contractor well i say they're all poor now but the bottom line to it is I'm not going to tell them how to properly do it because they'll sell them a way to properly do it. They'll sell them a way to do it. To properly do it when you look at what is happening. Um, but they want to do it, so let them do it. They want to fire some people and then later they can hire some we more have to people. Talk about that because let let Jeff, them do that too. Um, Deacon Jeff Lloyd is threatening to fire 300. I mean, I don't understand these people. How Jeff could have been a deacon in one of the greatest Christian denomination. A deacon. You hear me? Mm -hmm. And it's threatening to fire 300 citizens. I wouldn't say he is unsaved. I'd say that's unchristian. Unchristian? Yeah. Wow. Well, Jeff Lloyd, I am calling on the 300 citizens to find me so that when Jeff fire y'all we will make his life politically miserable we're gonna march on Jeff and we can remind him that it is the people's time and by that it's all the people
because it's unfair. And somebody has to stand up and march against these wicked, no good, FNMs. Stop victimizing the people. Say you're a Christian. You must see Christmas, but Christian. I'll be right back. Freedom March with Rodney Monker will be right back after this. This is Freedom March with Rodney Monker. Broadcasting live here on ILTV here in Nassau, Bahamas. Welcome back to Freedom March. My name is Rodney Monker. My special guest on this wonderful Friday, the 16th of June, 2017, is Mr. Wayne Monroe. And Mr. Monroe, for most of you citizens, you would be aware that he is perhaps one of our best attorneys here in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Brother Monroe, as we talk, I'm required to check the Texas that oh, comes yeah. in because my people, the Negro people, they become very upset if I don't read their text. So let me see what this one says. Goodness me. Mr. Monka, how are you? It's the people's time. God save the queen. Well, God save the queen. Um, let me, okay, just bear with me again. Um, life is, goodness me. Please, oh, I thank you for the reminder. On Tuesday of next week, I'm going to have a senior police officer who's going to join me on Freedom March. And this officer, Superintendent Hanna, he's from the police force, Ministry of National Security. We're going to discuss drugs and its effect. And he's providing me with additional information because I think there's going to be uh, another person who will accompany him. So by Monday, I will be able to give you more details. And I think it's going to be a very important show. And I need parents to encourage their young children, their teenagers, to join us when that senior officer joins me here on Freedom March. Uh, let's see what we got here. Monka, sir, I am fed up and tired now with Nemo and Dr. Minnis. I'm going to pick it, Nemo, until I get my roof repairs done. I'm tired. Monka, sir, I'm fed up. I'm tired now. And that is what that Negro citizen is complaining about. We have another text here. Well, he has a point. It's hurricane season again. Yes. Yeah. But Minnis has forgotten that. Hi, Mr. Monka. Some of these people who voted for the FNM, some of them soon start saving. They, some of them soon start saying they're sorry. But it is just too late to say you're sorry. Tell this FNM government stop lying on the PLP. But they thief. The money. Tell the people the truth. Stop spreading propaganda. Minister Guinness Hannah Martin, get them in the House of Assembly. Don't play dead. Stand up to those FNMs and let your voice be heard. You are a smart and intelligent woman. You can handle yourself. Let them know you ain't a fool. You went to school too. Well, you did recall that she did wheel up um, some of those FNMs backside. Okay, I need the second telephone so I can do minutes. Um, so, um, I have a caller, Mr. Monroe. I have a caller. Welcome to Freedom Match. Hello. Hello, Monica. once again. Hello, my dear. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Well, I want to ask you a question, which I wanted to ask you the other day. Do okay. you know a gentleman by the name of Louis Farrakhan? Louis Farrakhan. It sounds like a name I've heard before. In the United States. Oh, yes. Minister Evil Lewis Farragan. Man. Yes. Go ahead, speak well, to I me. I think you are emulating him. You really think so? But I'm a, I'm a Christian. Christian what? <laughs> Not with what's coming out of your mouth. 
I'm a Christian. Whatever you think comes out of my Listen. mouth. Listen. Yes? I have never heard in the history of Roman Catholicism any Roman Catholic being saved. They don't refer to that in the Roman Catholic Church. Okay. Well, don't forget now. I joined the church. So where are you getting hold all on, this I'm gonna, false info from? Hold on a second. I joined the church as an old man. And you're only referring to the Negroes. What happened to the Conky Joes and the White Bamians? We well, have all of them too. Well, but what calls into your show are the same stupid women every day. Goodness me. You're not a Conky Joe woman. And as not. for your guest, <laughs> Mr. Wayne Monroe, this woman I is not safe. <laughs> woman! Woman, you are not safe. Saved? You are not I saved. I am saved the same way anybody else is saved. I don't have to go before anybody to get saved. Anyway, I'm going to hang up on you it's because I think you ain't saved. Hang up on this Negro woman. How you call her Negro? That's a point. Huh? I suppose she is a conky Joe woman. I know the conky Joe when I hear them. She say, don't assume she is a Negro. I, I know she's a Negro. Okay. I can, that, that, that's I can a, tell. That's as a race now, not as a state of mind. I keep telling you, Negro is a is a designation of race. Yes. Okay. And she's a Negro. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, do I have any more phone calls? But for somebody who has issues with you, she shall sure listen to you. Yeah. That's amazing. It's a wonderful yeah. Negro woman who wanted to curse you out. Okay. Yeah. I don't mind being cursed out. I don't want them to curse my attorney. Uh, I don't mind. Welcome to Freedom Match. Hello. Hi. Hi. How you doing? And um, to Miss uh, Wayne Monroe, Mr. Wayne Monroe. Uh, my question is to uh, Mr. Monroe. Okay. Can you I help? heard you on kept saying that whatever the the, the ministers are saying now in Parliament, um, why can't they say that outside of Parliament? Mm -hmm. But I want you to explain wh how come the judge was able to make a judgment in Parliament with Jerome Fitzgerald. And well, Claire Spitt was able to win that case. Explain that to me, please. Well, let, let, let me say this. The FNM determined to not proceed with the appeal because it was determined that the judge was wrong. Let me explain something people don't understand. Judges have a right to be wrong. All they do is they make the judgment, which in their judgment is correct and you have the Privy Council and the Court of Appeal below them who will look at it and say, well, this judge was right or this judge was wrong. The judge's basis was that the action of getting the emails was governmental action. And so you were not talking about any right of Mr. Fitzgerald as a member of Parliament, but she was exercising constitutional control over governmental action, which is why the amount of vindic the amount of damages would have to be paid by the government the same way with the cost. Now, I am of the considered opinion that the judge's judgment is not correct. And I was prepared to argue that before the Court of Appeal. Uh, the court, the FNM discontinued the appeal. The only persons who that judgment affects in Parliament today are uh, FNM cabinet ministers when you read the judge's decision. So, you know, it applies to them. If the case arises, of course, the PLP or any private citizen can instruct a lawyer to bring an action against an FNM cabinet minister and the Speaker of the House when you read the judgment. And we could say, well, we're not going to get kicked summarily out of court because this has happened before. What the judge did is a precedent, legal precedent. But you say it's happened before, so we engage in litigation against now the FNM government minister, and that's that. When the PLP returns to power, if the same issue arises again, and it goes back to court because it was only decided at the Supreme Court level, whoever's dissatisfied with the judgment can very easily go to the Court of Appeal. When the Court of Appeal decides the matter, then going to the Supreme Court is usually pointless because when you go to the judge, you say, I'm bound by the decision of the Court of Appeal. Yes, yes. Justice Indra Charles's judgment doesn't bind any Supreme Court judge. 
So if a new case were to start, they have to exercise independent judgment. No lawyer can tell you what it's likely for that Supreme Court judge to do, as they would be able to tell you if there was a Court of Appeal judgment, for yes. instance, or a Privy Council judgment. That is why you litigate important matters and matters of moment to the Court of Appeal and the Privy Council so you could have an authoritative decision on it. What, what was the strategy behind the Prime Minister and his Attorney General to discontinue such a, an important case? What, 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 what do you think was the strategy? Well, I know from my um, legal education, a lot of cases proceed to the House of Lords as Mar House of Lords in England, Privy Council in our now Supreme Court, Privy Council in our case, so that you could start establish authoritatively a principle. Yes. The most that discontinuing this appeal does is give Fred Smith some cost and give um, Save the Bay's $150,000. So let me write that down. Save the Bay. Got one hundred and fifty thousand. We'll get one hundred and fifty thousand. Who will pay them? The government. The government will sorry, pay. Sorry, sorry, the people. The people, and yeah. that would be for the former minister Jerome Fitzgerald. For the supposed government action. And the cost. What kind of, of cost? Of you the, think of the appeal? Yeah. I imagine. No, no, not for the appeal, because they're discontinuing it. I'm talking about at the Supreme Court no, no, level. No, no cost. No cost was allowed at the Supreme oh, Court so level. They, so they just get one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Damages. I see. And then at the Court of Appeal, we've proceeded to two hearings, so Fred may put in a bill of 250 grand, 300,000. So let's give him, you sure we should just give him that little bit? I don't, well, I don't, I don't know what he's going to put his bill in well, for. Here. He might put his bill in for a lot more, say if the bears may recoup, what, five, five $500,000, all that money they were paying to wrap the Guardian and wrap the Tribune during election. Listen to me. If there is one lawyer who know how to charge good, it's Fred. I was looking at one of his charge. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this. I got the record for appeal, and it fit in a big suitcase. It was about 10 volumes. Wow. It took me about four days to read it. Wow. And that that I, was, I can guarantee That's the record you, he produced? The record of the appeal. Wow. Yeah. And I have no doubt um, that the people will pay a handsome sum. Having said that, there is some benefit of saying we have this issue of could a cabinet, could a member of parliament do this, where there's a clash between um, the... Save the bay and... No, no, there's a clash between the province of parliament and the judiciary. The judge, as judges are meant to be, was fearless delivered a judgment that she thought, is co is she thought is the correct one. It goes to the Court of Appeal. They will agree or disagree with her. There's value for it going to the Privy Council because then that's decided, that's finished, finished. that's done. Trite if, law. If that, well, it's not trite, but if that matter ever arises again, you don't have to concern yourself unduly. You pull up the privy, the Court of Appeal judgment or the Privy Council judgment and you say, well, Monka, you can't do that. Or government, you can't do that. Speaker, you can't do that. Speaker, you could do that. And you know what the law is. But I mean, right now, um, I've read her judgment again since the Attorney General says he, he, agrees. he agrees with it. And you know, this but, is a smart Attorney General. Well, what is worse is when we now use it against an FNM cabinet minister, I don't expect the office of the Attorney General to, put to, in to a, defend because right. the Attorney General says, as far as he is concerned, and he is the chief law officer of the Crown, the judge is right. So whatever the judge says you can do against a cabinet minister, because it's not applicable against any of the four PLP MPs, it's right. on, it's only, it only applies to, to government ministers. action, then when we come after them using this judgment, I do not expect the Attorney General to defend, because he says she is right. Did he speak too prematurely? Uh, I mean, that's, that, that's the position that they take. They took a position 
which I will say that he must have arrived at after mature consideration, because nobody would be so callous as to spend about half a million dollars of the people's money during the people's time without having considered it, considering all that they're talking about how they claim the PLP spent the money. So we must assume that they looked at it, they looked at the arguments that the English QC produced, that Lloyd Barnett produced, and they determined that, well, this is just sheer rubbish. We agree with the judge and Fred. Now, could it be that it is, they, they come to this decision because Save the Bay and Fred were good allies to the FNM. I, I know you have to be lawyer, but I mean... An, I'll, I'll put it to you like this. Because I'm your lawyer and I don't want nobody to sue you, right? No. All right. How it works is this. The facts are that one would have expected that something as important as this would be litigated at least in, at one appellate level, the Court of Appeal. It didn't happen. It was stopped. It is factual to say that the people who benefit from the withdrawal of the appeal are save the bays. Uh-huh. Um, and that's the, you make of those facts what you will. Yes. Let me just read a text, um, Mr. Monroe. Good afternoon, Mr. Monker and Mr. Monroe. Please explain to your audience exactly what a King George III Negro is. Thank you. Well, a King George III Negro would be Dr. Menes, Minister... Uh, what what is the, uh, Minister De Aguila and Jeff Lloyd? I th I think the the tax writer is saying, and and I must I must admit, yes, I would like to know what are the characteristics of a King George the Third Negro. Okay, I will. I'm doing a class on it next week. <laughs> I, I need a tune least, in. Yeah, I need at least six um characters, oh. and then I can discuss it. All right? Okay. Uh -huh. you're, 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 anyway. Hi, Mr. Monko. Could you ask Mr. Monroe if he's going to represent Mr. Smith on the seawall in Smith's Point, Grand Bahama? Because I think he would do a damn good job. Those fool nation monkey needs to stop. Goodness me. I don't, I don't know what a nation monkey is. I don't know either. I want you not to call my people monkey. Okay, so what do we have here? All right, so are you familiar with a Mr. Smith? Yeah, that, that's why I told you I came back from Grand Bahama when you were trying to reach me yesterday. Yes. I was in Grand Bahama, that I, and that is the seawall I went to look at, and that would, they were the documents I went to collect, and I look forward to see how the Ministry of Works explain that they approved and passed as safe and free of defect a seawall. Really? Yeah. The, the ministry approved that? Yes. Desmond the, Bannister must say no way. No, no. What, uh, what happens is... Goodness me. The ministry's people were responsible for drawing the plans. Wow. Because they were the employer. Okay. The ministry's people were responsible for inspecting the works, the steel works, the baskets before the concrete was poured. The ministry engaged a testing lab to test the concrete. Like when, wow. they, when they were pouring the point parking lot, every concrete pour you have to keep a sample of it and they crush it at particular days and it has to be of a particular PSI at a particular time. And they were testing this. And this was being built over the course of many months. And the Ministry of Works was inspecting. And approving? And approving. And the client said, if there was a, it was supposed to be a floating foundation, floating on sand, but they changed it to being built on the rock and although they were comfortable with floating a foundation on sand, when it was built on the rock, if there was just a little bit of sand, they made the people send them on and they had to brush it out before they would pass it. Wow. And they passed it. 
and they passed it. Wow. And they kept so, doing. So what went wrong? And they kept doing change orders up to the last change order was a week before they canceled the, the, the contract. Well, I want the FNM to be careful with Aram Lewis because Papa them had him at the gym when the Chinese was billing. And I can tell you that Aram ain't passed the test. You mean the stadium? The stadium. You trying to say he's the reason all the plumbing pipes yeah. are on the wall? Uh huh. Oh dear. And I'll tell you another thing about him. I showed up to serve a summons on him. I didn't know he knew the stadium that well. That man, break off run. <laughs> I'm serious with that. And I run behind him. You, right? You, but he was an athlete at one point. Eh? Yes. And I, all I asked him to stop in the name of the queen, he ignored me. Jump in a little truck as he reversed. That's him, Aram Lewis. But Aram, I'm what? gonna catch you one day. I did catch him. Yeah. I serve him in Danny um, Johnson's office. Do I have a phone call? Welcome to Freedom Match. Hello, Sa Mr. Senator. Sir. So, Hello, Mr. Senator. How are you doing today? I am fine. Just listen to me on the phone. Don't listen to the TV. Yes. Yes, and to my cousin, and to my cousin, Ian Monroe. Well, evening, cuz. Go ahead, talk yes. to me. Good evening, cuz. Yeah, yes, um, Rodney, um, I, I'm calling, man. We hasn't yet paid yet, man, from the road, man. That, that, that road. What road this is? I don't know what's going on. What road this is? Road, road and parks. Goodness me, they ain't pay you yet? No, no, that's plenty of we, man. We are hanging in the wilderness and that's all we doing, brother. Yeah, have you gone to see the Minister of Edu uh, Minister of Finance? Have you? And don't listen to my voice on the TV. Well, well, you really can't find the Jerry Woken down. Well, I got his telephone number. You have a pen nearby? Do you have a pen nearby? Yeah, you could. Yeah, yeah, give me that, write that number down. Ready? Yeah, go ahead. K. Peter Turnquist. Telephone number 327 1530. You got that? Yes. Three, another number 327 15. Yes. 37. You have that? Answer me. Yes, I got it. Now I want you to fax him up. Yes, sir. Ready? 327 1680. 18. Let, yes, re let me repeat that again. 327 1618. Right. And 327 1620. Yeah, I got it. Now I have his email. Ready? Okay. F I N A N C E. Yes, M A I L. At B A H A M A S dot G O V dot B S. I just hope the B S A a dirty <laughs> word. So call him and send him a fox, and you tell him that you don't give a fox, but you will fox him up if he don't fox him, pay you your money. Okay? You heard me. Hello? Yes, Take it. And I'm one to man them. Listen, get ready yeah. because we're going to have to grab the woman them and march on this wicked F&M. All right? Take it, care. Do I have another call? Anytime, up? man. God save the queen. Hello? Any more calls? Okay. Uh, let me just check quickly, Brother Monroe, to see if there is any more text. Oh, yeah, there is. Good afternoon again, Mr. Monka. Please pardon me, but will you tell your audience why these ministers are called King George III Negroes? Yes, I'm going to tell you, but not today. Okay? But I'm going to tell you why they have been elevated to that category. Because I have discovered two types of Negroes in the former colony. King George III... And King George the Six, you're going to have to hold that collar because the clock is running out on me. But I'm going to tell you, 
I just need to add some more Negroes. I believe that the Minister of Youth, Michael Pintard, I may declare him, because Michael Pintard looks the part. Michael is a King George VI Negro. So we have two categories, King George III and King George VI. Michael has made history, but next week, I will teach you about the Negroes and the categories they fall in. This is Freedom March. I'll be right back after the bills. Do you have something to say to the Senator? Call Freedom March at 323-7775. Toll free from anywhere in the Bahamas at 242-300-0045. Freedom March with Rodney Monker, only on ILTV. This is Freedom March with Rodney Monker. Welcome back to Freedom March broadcasting live here on ILTV here in Nassau, Bahamas. I'm looking at the Tribune. That is the Tribune, Friday, June 16. I'm actually, Mr. Monroe, looking at page three where there is more stories on the intellectual, or should I say the pseudo-intellectual, Minister of Education, Jeffrey Lloyd, where Jeff now says that the FNM will, in my words, waste $200,000 budgeted for review of the national curriculum. The current Attorney General, Carl Bethel, he was the Minister of Education when a committee was formed to provide a national curriculum on education. Jeff Lloyd, are you suggesting that Carl didn't do a good job? Are you suggesting that? Or is that one of the reasons, because it was more than one reason, why Mr. Ingram moved him and assigned him as chairman of the FNM? You better be careful. And Carl, watch out for Jeff Lloyd before he exposed your incompetency. And to be honest with you, I always thought that you were a competent man. Hello, welcome to Freedom March. Hello. How are you? Hello, Mr. Monk. Sir. You're a very good man, very smart man, and you have there on your show today a very prominent, smart lawyer, Mr. Monroe. Okay. Uh, what we, the Bahamian people, would like to know, with the hundred million that is missing from the uh, Bahama Bank, uh, we would like for you to call these out, people who owe this money. Well, I'm going to call out one name, now. Because uh, we, uh, fair is fair, right is right. Well, I'm going to call and one I name. I think they should be known to the Bahamian people. Let me call one. Whether they be DNA, f and M, or PLP, don't make no difference. Let's get with it. Well, I'm going to call one name, and I'm going to tell you, you nor the f and could touch him. You know who that is? Leslie Miller. Leslie owed $28 million, but Leslie's a smart, light-skinned Negro. When he saw the handwriting was on the wall, he went to the f and rally. And guess who park he went on? Christy Park. And there he endorsed Minnis. So that $28 million, Delia writes the note. Okay? So what are we going to do about that? Do we need to sell the... Uh Bowling alley to get the, some of the money oh, back. Oh, no, we can't do that. Leslie is Minnis' friend. Well, and don't forget what the kind of Negro Minnis is. Minnis is a man who had a contract for $7,500 a month for 10 years. And all Hubert Ingram told him to get rid of it. Minnis is prime minister today. And he has not announced that he has gotten rid of it. These are a bunch of Negroes. Certainly, you don't sound like a Negro. You sound like a saved man. Are you saved? Yes, sir. Okay, then. Uh, we got a smart lawyer there. Well, I figured he could uh, well, help us out with that. Well, we well, need some more people's names called because that's, that's only one. We need some other people's names called. Well, calling people's name doesn't recover any money. 
I agree with that. that that's, the, that that's the first but thing. That's the, why we got so many crooks, is because uh, everybody wants to hush hush about the crooks. No, the and that way it makes more crooks. The second thing is that what is involved is you had a grant of a loan. All across the banking world, over a time, people first became delinquent, which means you may be paying late. The banks love you when you pay late because they add interest and charges on it. And then people actually defaulted. There are a whole bunch of people who defaulted across all kind of banks. Um, the issue is, what steps do you take to recover? When, well, I can when, tell you one you can take, which would help a lot. Well, I'll tell you what they did. With BOB, they transferred some of their loans to Resolve, and they did so on a better arrangement than Scotia Bank sold some of its loans to a company that was owned by Sir Frank, that's owned by Sir Franklin Wilson and some other folks. It is a simple matter of banking. It's a simple matter of if they're commercial loans, commercial losses, I acted for a borrower who First Caribbean claims defaulted on one transaction that was worth 40 something million dollars and they sold the building and recovered five million dollars so they realized the loss of 30 million dollars. So I, there's nothing that I see or understand that says that they're not taking steps of enforcement against people at BOB. I tell people with BOB, I have some BOB shares. Anybody who thinks BOB isn't viable, I'm open to buy their shares. Well, th this is... The it's a bank. It, it, it's owned yeah. majority by the government, but smallholders <laughs> like me hold shares, and I'm sufficiently satisfied with its viability that anybody who owns BOB shares and wants to get rid of them, I'm prepared to buy them. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the reason why we got so many crooks is because it needs to be published on billboards and call them out by name. Let me tell you tell something. Hold on a second. Then we'll have less crooks. Don't encourage the government to break the law. There's something called bank secrecy. That's not breaking the law. The crooks need to be known because Listen. that's why we got so many. Everything is hush hush. I got to let Nobody you go. Nobody wants anybody to know who's crooks. Bank secrecy, okay? So uh, they crook you and they got to buy with it and you don't want to say nothing. Then they come and crook me and they got to buy with it and they go... I don't want to say nothing. I go to cook the next man and get by with it. So anyway, uh, what time is it? It's the people's time. All right. Goodbye. Bye. Senator, this is a text. Help me congratulate the Prime Minister of the Bahamas and wish him a happy Father's Day, including the former Prime Minister, Prairie, Pri, uh, um, Prime Minister, including the former Prime Minister, Perry Christie. Okay, I'll do it. Dr. Minnis. I have a Negro who's asked me to wish you and Mr. Christie happy Father's Day. Well, I know that in the case of Dr. Menes, his father's alive. In the case of Mr. Christie, his father is deceased. So um, I would want to t use this opportunity to wish every man whose father is alive happy Father's Day. Monroe, is your dad alive? Um, no, no. Okay. Died in well, I'm not going to miss you. Father's happy Father's Day. We got 18 minutes, Mr. Monroe. Um, so you better tell me what else um, I need to know because I know the FNM is doing a lot of victimization in the country. Is there a way to sue them? Oh yeah. Uh huh. Oh yes. Who all could we sue? Uh, what? Well. There are a number of types of actions, one of which you already know, because you know you have to sue those two overweight people. Yes. Um, that I've been a little slow on doing for you, but I think you understand. I do understand. Um, so there are actions related to when people lie on you. Yes. Outside of Parliament. Yes. That's why these cowards lying on people inside of Parliament. Well, they ain't got no shame, eh? They ain't got no I shame. Mean, they have no character. I mean, it's and terrible. they have no courage. And now there's a new trick that is being pulled on me. I have my first cousin on my daddy's side. She now calls the house robbing me saying the nuncio is our family. Right? That, that might be true. So I said to her, are you sure? Because he could only be related to me on the Haitian side of the family. Right? And she's mad with me. She's running on. That the nuncio is our cousin. So I said, all them years, that man know me. 
He never said cuz. He never hugged me. He never said anything kind. One day. And you never washed for free. No, one day he, he stopped the car at the corner of Oxford and Market Street and jump out. You hear me? If I was not a saved man, I got to lose control with my car. <laughs> all right? Now, all they telling me, I don't know how I got family to him. I really don't know. You, but you my don't, cousin is insisting. Tell you don't choose your family, Mr. I, but I would like to know. Okay. Because if he's my cousin, I'd like to go and see him and say, listen, you're making the family look bad. Mm. You follow my point? Yes, yes. Because I have cousins who do that to me now. Yeah. They, Welcome to Freedom Match. Hello. Hello once. Anybody else? Welcome to Freedom Match. Hello. Anybody Hello. else there? Hello. How are you? Mr. Munker, good evening. Good evening, my dear. And good evening to your guests. Evening. I, I'm fine. Yes, don't listen to the TV. Just listen to the telephone. Mr. Munker, yes. did you know if you were to join, if you were, if you were to become, if you were to become a deacon in the Catholic Church? Yes. Do you realize that your wife, I know your wife was to die, that you will not be able to get married again? Well, at sixty, if my wife should die, what I get married for? But in fairness to my wife. She has asked me. I don't know why she's telling me. She said to me, when I die, I want you to get married. And I told her that's impossible. She looked at me. She said, why? You are a handsome man. I said, if you die, how you expect for me to get married when there's no woman in my life? I'm going to have to start dating. And she said, no, no, no. Wait until I die. So I, I'm saying to you, I'm saying to you. Yes, I'm listening. I'm saying to you, if you were to become a deacon in the Catholic Church, right, and your wife were to die, yes, you were not, you would not be able to remarry. No, because your bride is the church. Okay, so you check with Jeff Lloyd. I know about Jeff Lloyd. Okay, I know that story. Good evening. I know that story. All right, and that is no excuse, because Jeff is an old man. She's suggesting that Jeff petition the Holy Father to remove him as a deacon so he could marry it again. Welcome to Freedom March. Jeff Good Hall. Afternoon. Good Hello. afternoon. How are you doing? I'm fine, but angry. Go. Mr. Monroe, you look sharp. Mr. Monroe? Uh, you look sharp. Monroe! Right. You, look, you look sharp. Well, thank you. And you enjoy your Father's Day. And happy Father's Day to both of you all and the entire Bahamas. And you have a good one. Enjoy your weekend. So I'll be waiting to listen to you on Monday. God bless you, my sister. That's one of the women there. I can tell. Yeah. Do I have any more people on the phone? Yeah. That is the excuse. Jeff is all. Sex is not for all people. I hate to see old people loving sex. You just watch? No, but, you know, <laughs> old people. Sex is for young people. Oh, no, huh? you shouldn't say that, Mr. Marker. Of course sex is for young people. Well, sex well, is well, not for old people. Well, my children is call me old. Yeah, but you're not old. Okay. But Jeff is old. He's older than me. Jeff is old. Walk away from the church? Huh? No, man. And I'm not getting in somebody's call. Well, that is true. Yeah. Let's leave him alone. Yeah. Yeah. But, but there it was is better th to marry than to burn. Yes, that's what it said. That there, is there, true. there is something else I think you need to continually focus the people's mind on. What is that? And it's what, because you just have these papers in front of me. Yes. What happens is these folks get in Parliament, say these things, and the papers print this stuff without telling people that they have not repeated it outside of Parliament. Wow. I have a call. Welcome to Freedom March. Are they still there? Hello, Mr. Malker. Hello, my dear. How are you today? I am angry. <laughs> As usual. Mr. Malker, I'm just calling to wish you and Mr. Monroe a happy Father's Day. I thank you. Uh, thank and I you. want y'all both to enjoy your weekend. I didn't get paid from the road contract, so I would have to be celebrating at the end of the month with my husband and my children. Yes. We'd have to celebrate the end of the month for Father's Day for him. Well, I thank you, but I but Father's Day is a sad day for me because my pa dead. 
Yeah, my daddy passed away also. So I, I don't really celebrate Father's Day because... But you, you still enjoy your day. You go to church and you go to early service. Yes, but my pa dead. <laughs> you follow? Yes, I follow. But I thank you very much. You're kind. Okay, tell Mr. Monroe happy Father's Day to him also. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. You're welcome. More call? Is there more call? Hello? Welcome to Freedom Match. Hello? Hello once, hello twice. They're not there. Monroe, we, it's more, 11 more minutes. Mm. What is it that you want to ask the FNM not to do? I hope I'm saying it correctly. I want you to tell them to be more kinder, more mm. loving, because Jeff Lloyd is threatening to fire 300, over 300 people. I'll, I'll give you a story, a quick story, because it turns on the Industrial Tribunal lab, pre-Labor Day seminar on Ball. Yes. And when last year, Indira Demerit Francis, the president of the Industrial Tribunal, I was on the organizing committee, myself and Ellsworth Johnson. You have to take a call. Take Welcome to Freedom come. March. Sorry about that, Monroe. No, no, no. Take the call. Hello. Hello again. Yeah, reconciling. Good evening, uh, uh, Mr. Wayne Monroe. How are you, sir? I'm good, sir. All right, all right. You know, I'm listening. <laughs> the woman them say, you all look sharp, man. And I don't <laughs> admire man, but you know, that's what the woman them say. Listen, you, you got eyes. Do I look sharp? <laughs> if I look sharp, I look sharp. Brother Michael, yes, sir. The King George the Third Negro and the King George the Sixth. Uh, I can take a crack at that, but you know. Uh, Hold on a second. Hold on a second. What am I understanding it? Hold on a second. Yeah. I will give you a prize if huh? you tell me who the three ministers who were assigned in the category of King George the Third Negroes. Name them. No, no I am not going to uh, specify it to no know. Goodness me, so I'm talking. So he's a, he's a, a general listening to me, Mr. Munger. Listen, you better call me on Monday. I thought you were listening to me and you knew who they were. Do you know who the three are? Do you know who they are? Goodness me. Tell my comrade, call me Monday. Anybody else on the phone? Welcome to Freedom Match. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Mr. Monka. How are you? I am sad. You are sad today, sir? Yeah, man. They have a lovely polka dot bow tie. Do you like the polka dot bow tie? Yes, it no, looks like polka dot. You, you make me feel a little better now. <laughs> so, and good afternoon, Mr. Monroe. Good afternoon. I, I wanted to find out who is the Minister for Immigration. Brent, with the, at the responsibilities, Brent Simonat. That is true. Okay, well, I had, I, I had somebody came to me today, and they said that you know, they have relative, a relative who is in the new recruit for the immigration. And they was just expressing to me how that these young men and women are in the sun all day for March in training, and nobody say nothing to them since the government changed. These Negro men and women, like Mr. Monker to say, they're in the hot sun, burning up, and they haven't given those young men and women not even a dollar. That can't Every be true. Every day they are out there, and they are. I saw them walking on Michael Road the other day. A whole crew of them looked like they were heading to the detention center. They want to come Michael Road going through Glass, really? Glass Golden House Road, wherever the detention center is. Yes. And a whole crew of them. And this, this lady was telling me her niece do not, haven't even gotten one dollar. Wow. And it is so sad. Well, you know what I mean? These young men, I mean, I don't care who government comes into place. If you meet something going on, you have to try and at least carry on with what you met going on. And now you, the, every day she's saying they don't know what they're going to do with them. They don't know when they're going to be paid. They have to the, the do this and they have to do the next. Come on, man. It's not fair. And I understand some of these young men and women came from the family islands. That's horrible. Some people can't pay rent. Some people can't That's buy, horrible. I, I'm not even feed their children. Look, call me on Monday. Yes, sir. I'm going to find the Minister of Immigration number. And depending on how I wake up, I might assign Brent. As the fourth King George the Third Negro. But it's Brandon Negro. Of course he's a okay, Negro. Okay. Don't you see him and Minutes act the same way? No, no, Any, no, anyway, no. you take it care, sister. 
We're going to deal with that on Monday. No, no. It's, is his race Negro? Of course he's a Negro. Okay, good. Yeah. Anybody else? Hello? Welcome. Hey, Monica. Sir, How you doing? Right here, man. I just wanted to say that we, I came to Nassau a couple months ago and I saw your show. Okay. I'm in Freeport now and I'm watching you all now. And people in Freeport is getting on to you. You got some bad juice, man. Everybody loose on you, man. Really? Uh, furthermore, I would like to say... Even if your father die, you, I believe you are a father also. I am. So we're going to wish you happy Father's Day. You're kind. And uh, Manka, this is my, you know, this is, uh, you should know me, but this is Tyrone T. This is Mr. T, backside, let's go to Palace and a whole lot more. Wow, this you? you? Good Father's Day too, man. I thank you God very much, you. and we extend the same thing to you. Do I have anybody else? Hello, welcome to Freedom Match. Hello. Yes, how are you? Yes, I would just like to congratulate um, Vanessa and Martin, she's doing a good job. Wonderful Tell congratulations woman. and keep up the good work. Amen. That's powerful. Mm. Monroe, anybody else on the phone? Goodness me. The I'll, clock's I'll so running on me. Story later. Welcome to Freedom March. Hello. Please answer me. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey. Hey, Mr. Monroe, how are you doing? I am fine, my dear. I just want to say Happy Father's Day to you and Mr. Wayne Monroe. I hope you have a good one and enjoy it. We thank you, thank you. from the depths of our hearts. It's a wonderful Negro woman. Anybody else? Goodness me, the clock can run out on me today. Hello, welcome to Freedom March. Hello, listen to me. Good afternoon, how you doing? I am fine. Good afternoon, how you doing? We are fine, we are fine. Happy Father's Day to you and your guests. We thank you. We thank you very much. You, you hear me? Yeah, and you look so lovely. Do you like my bow tie? Oh man, you There is great. magic in the bow wow, tie. Your wife should be very proud of you. Yeah, I'm going to celebrate Father's Day today. Or should I say tonight? Thank you very you much, eh? Good one. God bless. Thank you. Anybody else? Because welcome to Freedom March. You all better extend my time today. Hello? Hey. Sir. How you doing, Mr. Monroe? We are fine. Happy Father's Day to you, and Mr. Monroe. Thank we you. thank you, and we extend the same to you. Good people, good people. God uh, go ahead. I just want comment on Glenis Alamon. She did a wonderful job, man. Listen, if you see her, salute her for me, okay? Yeah, I think she could be in the running for the next the leader, man. I know she. Well, I'm supporting you know? Philip Brave Davis. No, man. I I like to see Glenis Glenis get a, a wit and a sharpness, man. I like her. I know. And Mr. Money on the side, oh man. Okay. You, mean, you understand? Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but Philip Brave Davis. Is the man that Papa had me yeah, investigated? Yeah, you know, you know, you know we, 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 yeah. Okay. We, we, we together, we together, we knocking them. Okay, then. We ain't gonna be like the F and M. Okay, I'm gonna comment something with Jeff Lloyd. You know, Jeff Lloyd. I can give a story on Jeff Lloyd on Monday. Monday. Thank you very much. Anybody okay. else? Hello. That's it. Don't bring anybody else. One more. Final call. Go ahead. Hello. Hello, Mr. Manka. Hello, my love. Talk to me. Don't listen to the phone. Hello. Hello. Talk How to me. How you doing, Mr. Monroe? I am fine, my love. Excellent show. Excellent show. We thank you. Monroe is always... And you look so handsome today. Happy Father's Day to you, Mr. Monroe. Monroe, you heard the lady? Yes, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Take good care, my love. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. Um, good. Don't take no more call. Monroe, there's three minutes and 14 seconds to go. I should let you row for that. Okay, well, yeah. thank you. First of all, I thank you for coming. And please come whenever I call you because I want the FNM to see that there are good lawyers in the opposition. And you would even take the cases of FNM if they are victimized as well, wouldn't you? Oh, yes. Yeah. This is good. Folks, this is the weekend. Let's be kind. Let's don't commit no crime. If somebody provoke you, pretend like you ain't hear them. Come on. The Bahamas under the FNM has been declared the 11th um, highest rate in the world. It means that we are committing all kind of murders. And we know Minnis promised that he would hang murderers. And he's turned out to be extremely disappointing. And we know that Marvin, don't even look out for the prison 
the prison overseer. They're complaining to me that the prisoners are throwing buckets of nanny on them. I was supposed to talk about it, but circumstances change that. And then I have evidence that Marvin tells certain, can certain constituents the wrong time so they don't show up at the branch meeting. But Marvin, that ain't right. You must tell, you must be honest with the constituents because they're talking to me. And I plan to hold you accountable. You understand? I want you to take that nasty stinking toilet of them buckets out of the prison. All right? You promised the people, now you're ducking. They told me, you know. And in protest, a Negro male is going to show up to the House of Assembly with a slob bucket. Now, Negro male, you make sure it's a clean slob bucket and no human waste in it. But that is what's going to happen. They asked me if it was a sin. I told them it was not a sin as long as it was sanitary. All right? That's going to be the protest. We're going to send slob bucket to you, Marvin. And tell you, clean up that dirty, nasty, stinking cell. Because people shouldn't be nannying in bucket no more. All right? It should stop. Folks, take good care. Have a happy and safe Father's Day. And go to church. And you married men who have outside children, for Father's Day, take the outside children home to meet your wife and your lawful children. Isn't that powerful? We are married men who have been keeping sweetheart for years and have all kind of outside children. If you all as man take your outside children to meet the wife and the lawful children. But I know one man in the FNM who is a superman. His wife know his children inside and outside. This is Freedom March. Happy Fathers! The thoughts, views, and comments expressed by Rodney Monker, his guests, callers, and advisors on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of ILS, the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV Studios and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without the express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2017. All rights are reserved.